Welcome to St. Bartholomew's Episcopal Church for our online worship on July 12th, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. We are delighted to have you with us. Blessed is the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Jesus said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel. The Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. From the first lesson is a reading from the book of Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, 
giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here ends the reading. Let's read together Psalm 65, verses 9 through 14. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root and endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, when Ken and I came over here for filming, Michael and Jennifer were here cleaning up the garden and tending to some of the raised beds. Then on Monday, I was here again, and Margaret and Liza were finishing up here in the memorial garden as Mary Calvin drove by to check on the front garden. On Wednesday, I found Liza back here in the memorial garden again. Gardening has been on my mind all week, thanks to our texts, and it's obvious from a glimpse at our gardeners that it's not for the faint of heart. It's a constant tending, paying attention and responding, planning and looking ahead. Today in our gospel, we are deep in the garden or the sowed field. And as every gardener knows, it's all about the soil. Worked with compost, nourished 
and even rested appropriately, soil has to be cultivated before plants can be cultivated, which is exactly what we hear in the parable of the sower. Soil matters. Four scenarios of our parable. Seed that lands where soil has become packed down simply sits on the hardened surface to become food for the birds. Seed that falls on rocky soil can't take root, can't draw sufficient nutrients from the soil. Seed that falls on ground covered in thorns has to compete with invasive plants and doesn't stand much of a chance. Seed that falls on soil that has been prepared, turned over and loosened, re replenished with nutrients, those seeds thrive. Jesus speaks in parables to help people see things, understand things we wouldn't otherwise. He uses things we do understand to show us glimpses of God's kingdom, God's ways. And while it's tempting to hear this parable and focus on the sower, I think it's more likely that it's really about the soil about those who hear the word of God, about us. We are the soil. Think about it. Like soil, human beings are shaped by our environment. Soil that's trampled over and over gets packed down and isn't fit for planting seeds. Human beings who have been walked over trampled again and again by injustice or circumstance or other people, they tend to develop a hard exterior, a protective, defensive shell, which makes it difficult for them to flourish and grow. Rocky soil describes those who lack the perseverance to cope with rocky times. When the going gets difficult, they retreat or give up or blame others. Soil filled with thorns translates easily into our overcrowded lives. There's no room in an already overplanted plot for anything more, anything life-sustaining that would yield fruit when thorns have taken all the space, which leaves the good soil. Though it's not as simple as it sounds, a gardener will tell you that good soil takes years to cultivate. It has to be fed, nourished by years of plants which have come and gone, fed with compost and nutrients that take time to develop a rich base. It needs working and reworking to become supple, but it shouldn't be overworked because that will break down the structure. It must be replenished time and again as seeds grow and draw out the nutrients. Our presiding Bishop Michael Curry hosts a weekly blog post called Habits of Grace. Each week, Bishop Curry offers an invitation, both in written and video form, to help us cultivate a habit of grace. For us, what might habits of grace look like? I think of the way Barbara pays attention to B, her dog of elder years. In the midst of our Zoom knitting gathering, Barbara realized that B seemed confused and a little distraught. So Barbara went and picked B up and settled her on the couch with Barbara so B could rest assured that Barbara was close by. That kind of attention, care and compassion is a habit of grace. It deepens our capacity for empathy and enriches the soil of our hearts. Maybe for you, a habit of grace is taking time to pray or spending quiet time recharging in the midst of God's creation. Maybe that's having your cup of tea or coffee in your garden first thing in the morning. 
are going for a walk every evening. We cultivate a habit of grace by identifying it first and then nurturing that trait or habit in a way that enriches the soil of our lives. For example, clergy in our diocese are meeting in regionally based small groups, which means that every other week I have a Zoom meeting with clergy from Brunswick, Falmouth, Portland, and Cape Elizabeth. If we cultivate this habit of grace by continuing to build trust and connection, even after the days of COVID, we might instinctively turn to each other for support and collaboration without competition or ego. Another very different example. Recently, we were asked by one of the ethnic communities in Portland to support the reopening of their church. We might be tempted to tell them all the reasons they shouldn't begin in-person worship because we've spent a great deal of time considering the dangers and we believe it's going to be very risky. As majority affluent white Americans, it's easy for us to assume a position of power, making decisions for others as if they are unable to make them for themselves. We cultivate a habit of grace when we learn to begin from a place of honoring the other's wisdom and experience, recognizing that their experience of the current crisis in this country is not our experience. They are the only ones able to determine the needs of their community to worship together, even in the face of COVID, perhaps because of the ongoing violence against black and brown bodies. Through our Y Chi program and all that our new Mainer friends have taught us, we've cultivated the grace to respond by asking how we can support them. Their request is that we help them worship in person as safely as possible. L.L. Bean donated 200 masks via Maine Medical Center. The UU Church donated two no-contact thermometers. Dr. Sharon McDonald donated surface dis disinfectant and we were asked to donate a case of hand sanitizer. In addition, I ask us to pray for the ongoing well being of our siblings in Christ at City of the Lord Church in Portland, Pastor, Pastor Placido Mawa presiding. Our parable asks What kind of soil are we? At this admittedly stressful and strange time, how are we responding? We could react defensively like packed down soil, or give up because the road is rocky, or be overwhelmed by the chaos of all that is different now as the tasks and online meetings threaten to crowd us out. But consider instead what we could be learning from it all how we might be deepening our connections, rooting ourselves more fully in God's love, finding ways to work the soil so that grace might thrive and flourish within us and around us. That all sounds good. It makes sense. But what about when we are exhausted even good soil can be less than rich and fruitful at times. There are days when we've just had enough and aren't sure we can take anymore as individuals, as people of this nation, as Christians whose hearts are breaking. These words from a sermon by Howard Thurman resonate loudly for me as a commentary on our situation and the ongoing cries for racial justice across our nation. We need to find hope 
in the face of whatever feels hopeless. Thurman wrote, look well to the growing edge. All around us worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. All around us life is dying and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree. The roots are silently at work in the darkness of the earth against a time when there shall be new leaves, flesh, fresh blossoms, green fruit. Such is the growing edge. It is the extra breath from the exhausted lung, the one more thing to try when all else has failed the upward reach of life when weariness closes in upon all endeavor. This is the basis of hope in moments of despair, the incentive to carry on when times are out of joint and men have lost their reason. A source of confidence when worlds crash and dreams whiten into ash the birth of a child, life's most dramatic answer to death. This is the growing edge incarnate. Look well to the growing edge. Friends, in this strange time, may we take the opportunity to pay attention, to be surprised even now by the growing edge, that sign of hope. Sometimes the growing edge is profound. The birth of Don Massey's first grandchild, baby Maggie. But often the growing edge, the sign of hope, is something more every day, available to us if we are paying attention. Mary Calvin let last year's lettuce go to seed at the end of the season. And surprisingly, it sprung back in force, even though it really shouldn't have and I have it on good authority that it's delicious. The rock in our memorial garden that sometimes doubles as a baptismal font has a small tree growing from a cleft in the rock. There are hundreds of signs of hope if we are looking. So even if momentarily we happen to be feeling beaten down are overcome by life's thorns, or we are at our rockiest. We can look to the growing edge, the sign of hope, and be assured that God's grace finds a way always. Though honestly, grace takes hold much more easily in soil that is tended, cultivated with intention and care. God grant us a good week of tending. Amen.
Our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? I believe and trust in God Almighty. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe and trust in Christ our Savior. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. These are the prayers of the people. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom you chose us before the foundation of the world and destined us in love to be your own, help us to pray for all your children, for the church which is Christ's body, that it may live for the praise of your glory. For our bishops, Michael and Thomas, Nina, our rector, and for all who bear Christ's name, that our lives may proclaim your glory. In our diocesan cycle, we pray for the summer chapel congregations of Trinity in York Harbor and St. Peter's by the Sea in Cape Nettick, and for those who suffer persecution, oppression, and denial of human rights. In our Anglican cycle, we pray for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the life and health of the world, that your peace may be known and may prevail. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who exercise rule and authority, that the integrity may mark all their dealings. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who suffer, that they may know the hope to which you call us. We pray for Steph, Bobby, Charles, Kellen, Pat, Mackenzie, Mima, Janice, Scott, Katie, Nick, Marcella, Libby, Mike, David, Carrie, Gloria, Noreen, Tim, Eric, Sue, Sam, Kathy, Diane, Alan, Brittany, Arthur, Matthew, Jean, and Lee. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are separated from us by death, that theirs may be the kingdom for which is unshakable. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious, be with those who care for the sick, and lift up all who are brought low. 
that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, O God of our salvation. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Jesus said to the disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of peace by texting a few of our friends, perhaps people we sit near in church or family and friends far and wide. While we continue to do that, our VPOW this morning, Ann Berg, will catch us up on some of the announcements. Good morning. I'm Ann Berg, and I'm your Vestry Person of the Week this week, here to give you a few announcements and resource information. I'm not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail because there's a lot of detail in the e-bulletin about all of these announcements that Bolton, which you will have received a couple of days ago. Um, I also encourage you to check our website for additional information, which is updated on a regular basis. Um, first order, I would like to uh, make sure you understand that this week, our coffee hour topic for discussion is going to be things that expand our hearts. And we hope that you will join us after this service for that discussion and some fellowship. St. Bart's will be doing our lobster dinner as we have in the past few years this year on August 22nd, but this year it will be to go. Um, there'll be curbside pickup with lobster, corn potato salad, biscuits, blueberry buckle, all wrapped up in a basket, and the proceeds will benefit our outreach programs. Again, there, is detail, there are details on how to order in the e-bulletin and on our website. Both um, Friendship House and St. Elizabeth's are ex accepting donations again, and there are bins for these um, on the covered part of our walkway outside the church. The details of what they're particularly looking for are listed in the e-bulletin. The food pantry in Yarmouth is also accepting donations. Again, the details you can find as to what they're looking for and where to drop them off are in our bulletin. There are a number of resources that are available to everyone. These are listed on our website. They include the healing prayers, the main frontline warm line, the da daily meditations, and um, information on the Yarmouth aging in place. I encourage you to look at the St. Bart's website for the details on this. Thank you and hope to see you at coffee hour.
God be with you and also with you. Lift up our hearts. We lift them to our God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours, our true and loving God. You are the strength and goodness of fatherhood. You are the wisdom and love of motherhood. You are light and grace and blessed love. You are Trinity, you are unity. With so much of this life beyond our control, often overwhelmed by anxiety and grief, we gather around your table to remember that there is nothing the powers of this world can bring, nothing in our present lives, nor in whatever the future may hold. There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from your love. You, O oh God, are nearer to us than our own soul, for you are the ground in whom our soul stands. So will we bless you as long as we live and lift our voices in praise as we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious one, before you made us, you loved us. And when our sin turns us away from you and causes us pain, in your love and mercy, you assure us that all shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of thing shall be well. Out of love for us, you sent your son Jesus to live and die as one of us, to teach and heal, to feed those who were hungry, to embrace the outcasts. Through his life, you showed us the depth of your reconciling love for the world. Through his death and resurrection, you overcame death forever and gave to us everlasting life. On their last night together, Jesus gathered his friends around the table. He took the bread, gave you thanks, broke it, and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the cup of God's new covenant with you and with all, the promise of life everlasting. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. The love of Christ restores and transforms us, and we rejoice in our salvation. We open our hearts to love one another as he loved us. We remember how he died and rose again to live now in us. Together with him, we offer you these gifts and ourselves, our souls and bodies. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Empowered by your Spirit, may we do justice and love kindness and walk with you all our days until at the last we are gathered home and our hearts may rest in you. With all your people, past, present, and yet to come, we give you thanks and praise through the Son and in the Spirit in every moment of our lives. 
now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. The gifts of God for the people of God. My friends, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment when circumstances impede them from actually receiving communion. Let us pray. Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. While we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind, and rest assured that God is infinitely more concerned with the promise of our future than the mistakes of our past. And the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.